this is girded too. It's been five days since we poisoned it. Um, the Termidor. And uh, you can see the dead ants after we've peeled the, the outer shell away. It's, it's pretty pretty sickening scene. It stinks quite a lot. They're rotting. And you can see up there there's like a, a slop of ants. And when we first pulled it away there were um, maggots crawling through it. It really quite stinks. Scott Kleinsmith from BASF. He's an entomologist. He's about to dig into this nest for us now. I'll just photograph what's going on. running at about um, average, if not even a bit longer than average. Uh, a lot of the trial work I've done with the dusk is working at around about two, three weeks from the time of treatment till all activity has ceased. So four weeks, this is what I would have expected to find. Yeah, well, we've been finding that we've been getting a, about nearly a full kill after about seven days. Especially in this environment where you are getting very close to where the nest is, yeah, that would be right. Um, if you were to remotely say that there was a, an activity further below and you uh, dusted there and it wasn't their main uh, nest site and they had to carry it back, then it sometimes can take three weeks, four weeks. After I've done um, uh, some dusting work previously uh, with termites, and you'll find that this, this uh, fungal activity happens at around about three to four weeks after treatment. Good sign that there's been a lot of death and destruction of the nest. You can see also a nice little gallery running up through here. That would have been the main runway probably to the uh, to other points in this uh, in this girder. So do you say it might have had what, like a couple of bivouacs in this girder? I'd suggest that's probably more the case. Um, you might find the, the Royal Chamber may be in here, it could be in uh, another section. Um, they might, might actually be an interconnected, um, you know, some sort of a, a super colony, something that might be in this one and even the next one as well. So yeah, you might find little, like you said, little bivouacs where they've set up uh, an area where they'll process the food. But we'll have a look inside and see what's off. Um, in my previous looks at uh, Coptotermis asinaciformis um, throughout Australia, when you uh, get to close to where the Royal Chamber is, it's very fine both in the size of the galleries and the workings as well as the, um, uh, the thickness of the, um, of the cart material. But they probably wouldn't need to build anything majorly solid because they've got this as a, as a home. But layer after layer there's just dead termites throughout it. Mainly the head capsules of the soldiers quite often the case. And you can see the fungal activity, we're probably getting closer to where probably the Royal Chamber may be if it's here. Um, other work I've done you'll quite notice that the, um, uh, after any sort of uh, poisoning event that the termites quite often will uh, retreat back into the heart, very close to where the queen is. And you can see this happening here with this fungal activity and quite a few dead bodies inside. Queen's actually very hard to, uh, to find at the best of times, even in a live termite now. Um, I run at a success rate of about uh, a third. For every three mounds I'll find one queen. It's just so hard to uh, move softly. But after four weeks after a, a, a termite or dust treatment like this, the queen might actually be, like the rest of the colony, just a, a, a dead, already uh, processed individual. So it might be very hard, but just the way this is shaped the way it is, it, it does look like a does look like a, a nest. There's a lot of dead termites in 